that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. This idea of imminency does not mean that God thinks the Lord Jesus can come any time. You see, there's a specific day that God has on his calendar. So when people say, well, you can't believe in imminency because Jesus told Peter how he was going to die, and obviously the Lord couldn't come then. You see, God is quite free to say this is going to happen and that's going to happen because God knows the hour, but we don't know the hour. And so we live on the tiptoe of expectancy. We are not looking for signs. I am not waiting for them to find the ashes of the red heifer. I could care less. We are waiting for his son from heaven. That's what we're waiting for. We're not waiting for anything to happen down here. There's not a thing necessary to be fulfilled before the Lord Jesus returns. Our responsibility is to live this day in the light of that day. Now, Paul said, I only had two dates on my calendar, this day and that day. And I live this day in the light of that day so that when I get to that day and look back at this day, I'll have nothing to be ashamed of. It's a happy way to live, isn't it? I had a dear grandmother, my father's mother. She never had much in this world. She lived a fairly rough life. She, uh, she scrubbed other people's floors and looked after other people's children and did other people's laundry and worked her fingers to the bone and never had much in this world. And I remember when I was first out preaching, she'd come to me sometimes and she'd squeeze a five or ten dollar bill into my hand and I'd say, oh, Grandma, please. Like her glasses would be stuck together with scotch tape, you know? And I'd say, Grandma, come on, please. And she'd say, now, son, I'm just investing in a little real estate in heaven. <laughs> How could you not take it from her? She wasn't living for this world. It didn't mean anything to her. But she was living for that world. You see, people who don't live for either world are the most miserable people anywhere. They have nothing down here and, and they never think of what's up there. It's not a matter of living for nothing. It's not a matter, as we said the other day, seekest thou great things, seek them not. It doesn't say that. Seekest thou great things for thyself, seek them not. But we ought to be seeking great things. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that whatever we do, we're doing it as unto the Lord. And he wants you to live this day in the light of that day, in the light of the glory of the Lord. And then every day becomes a special day. Every day becomes historic. It's the day that the Lord has made, the day the Lord has handed to us, and we live it for his glory and in light of that coming judgment day.